This is the ST for us, and I'm going to do a throttle body idle tune, etc. setup on it. Some of this will be handheld because it's just too hard to not do it handheld. <clears throat> I'll just start by showing you a few things. Looking around it, things we're going to do is there's a little screw there. That's the balance port screw for the horizontal cylinder. And there's similar little slotted head screw there. That's the balance screw for the vertical cylinder. I call it balance. Some of our American friends might call it sync or synchronization. It's just a word. To check the exhaust mixture, there's one plug here and a header. And the other cylinder. <clears throat> the plug is there. Uh, this bike has standard mufflers, so it'll be nice and quiet. Hopefully you can hear me talking while it's running. Uh, it also means that you can't put a probe into the end of the muffler. Uh, sometimes you can, but with the standard mufflers you tend not to get, be able to get the probe in far enough down the, the pipe to be able to get a good mixture. Uh, what you will get if you plug it in the, the back of the muffler here is you'll get a lot of oxygen in from the outside and it just dilutes the signal and makes it useless. That's why I run into the header pipes themselves and that way you get by far the best result. Back to this side of the bike. The things we're going to be using today when we adjust things, this big white screw here, or white thumb wheel, you might call it, is what we use to adjust the balance, I might call it the running balance, or the synchronization between the two cylinders. And that's just the adjustment for running at, you know, two, three, four, five thousand RPM. It's always a compromise. Some models, the compromise is less than others. These are usually pretty good. 749s and 999s can be particularly bad. Uh, it's just the way it is. The next thing we're going to adjust is the air bleed screws. And there's an air bleed screw in there behind the throttle linkage. It's a little brass head screw. It's quite hard to see. But that's what we're going to be using to adjust the idle mixture and idle speed at the end. And the other air bleed screw, if we can find it, <laughs> it's very hard to see with the air box on, is up in there, just above the throttle linkage in front of the white thumb wheel. That's a vertical air bleed. People often ask what the, the default position for air bleeds is, and the answer is there isn't. It's whatever it needs. Um, these were half a turn out. I've wound them all the way in now. When you're doing the the uh, balance or sink adjustment, you wind the air bleeds all the way in and you just, with the vacuum gauges, you set the balance how you want it and then, because this bike hasn't got an idle control valve, you then wind the air bleeds out to give you the idle speed. On a bike that has an idle control valve, one air bleed stays all the way in and the other one is wound out as required to lean that cylinder off to get the idle mixture the same on both cylinders. So if you have one cylinder that's richer, that's the air bleed you wind out because the air bleed is just a vacuum leak. That's all it does. It's not accounted for in the airflow because the airflow measurement on these is implied from the throttle opening and the RPM. So there's no actual airflow measurement. So when you wind an air bleed out, it just introduces a vacuum leak and that leans that cylinder out.
Okay, so we need to open the vertical cylinder more, which means we need to adjust the thumb wheel here to move backwards. It'll rotate a little bit to take the pivot slack in the front up. So now it's all the way there. Turned that way, so it's stopped. So now we'll rotate this. You need to keep an eye that the shaft doesn't move. If the shaft's moving, it means the nut at this end is loose. You need to tighten the nut up first. So we'll adjust this. And the shaft did move. So I've got to tighten that nut up. actually a flat section on this rod here that you can hold the rod. Often not a bad idea. But what's happened now, I'll just centralise that on the front. You need to make sure that the rose joint on the front is nice and vertical. If it's either way, you can be, affect the balance quite a bit. So now that's tight, that's probably pushed the rod a bit longer anyway. And you can see on our gauges that it's much more even. We'll give it a rev up and see how it goes. I'd say probably a little bit too much opening on the vertical, but when you're adjusting that lock, front lock nut and tightening it up, that often happens. So I might hold that link and wind that in a bit. My little itty bitty shifter. Put that on there so we can hold it. And now I need to wind that one in a bit. very hard.
Okay, so what we're going for is the best compromise, and often it is a real compromise. See, we're here, we'll rev it up. So I'd call that about the best compromise we're going to get. So now we need to make it idle, so we start winding the air blades out. It's currently idling because the fast idle lever is still on. So we take these out, say half a turn each. Push the fast idle off. Diagnostic tool says it's idling at about 1100 revs. Might go a little bit higher. But what I'll do now is just check the idle mixture. For that, we use a gas analyzer. This is the gas analyzer. This is the part that not many people have at home, which makes it hard for people doing this to do the whole job. We'll fire it up and uh, start checking idle mixture. Okay, so I'll take it over now and plug it into the horizontal header takeoff. plugged into the horizontal cylinder and it's not too bad really what we're looking for is the carbon monoxide CO which is this number here this is the hydrocarbons and this is the oxygen hydrocarbons and oxygen are a good indicator of how clean it's running uh, 344 parts per million at 1.2 percent is nice and 4 percent CO on a bike of standard mufflers is also really nice so we'll go to the vertical cylinder. We'll see what the vertical says. Because the idle trimmer is at zero, it's a nice base setting to have. So if you can keep it as close to zero as possible, that's theoretically good. But again, you just give it whatever it wants. About 4.9%. What we can do is open the air bleed a bit more on this cylinder and it will lean it out. So we'll try an extra, maybe a quarter turn of air bleed. That's a quarter turn of air bleed, so we've gone a little bit far. You can hear the idle mixture pick up. It has brought down the hydrocarbons and the oxygen. That's usually what happens when you make it happier. But I'll probably go an eighth of a turn back in. About an eighth of a turn back in and it's bringing it back to about four percent so i think we'll call it happy there we'll just check the the horizontal again back to the horizontal about four percent still so that, that should be nice and you probably will have a look at the balance gauges but i think we'll probably have pulled the vertical vacuum down a little bit having wound the air bleed out it reduces the vacuum and so they'll probably be pretty close to the same on both cylinders now so that's the vertical mix to take off out of the header
look at the back end now, a bit of air in it, but changing the air bleed settings hasn't made much difference at all to the, the back end gauge reading. So now it's idling at about 1100 RPM still, it's at 104 degrees and the thermo fan is running, which is good. I always run the bikes until the thermo fans come on to make sure the thermo fan works. I have had bikes that I've serviced in the past that have done 30,000 kilometres and you do a thermo fan test, it doesn't work and you realise that it's the bike's wiring loom was wrong and it was never ever going to work and no one's ever picked it up. So I always check them. You see the throttle angle is now showing 2.2 degrees. That's just what happens when you're different between hot and cold and running and not running. There's always a difference in throttle angle. That's the way it is. 19 degrees air temperature, which is good, because that's realistic. And the intake air pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure, is 101. 8 millibars and that again that's realistic you need to check these numbers to make sure they're realistic if the ambient air temperature was 100 degrees something's wrong the pressure is you know 500 millibars something's wrong so you just look at those and check you can see the co trimmer is at zero haven't changed that that's fine one of the check i do now is the battery voltage just to make sure it's charging Just checking the battery voltage, the thermo fan is on, showing 12.6 at idle. Give it a few revs. And that's fine. It comes up to 13.9 volts, probably by about 1800 revs, so that, that's no concern at all. It's good. So it's showing 2.2 degrees or 2.3 throttle opening. If we just kill the engine, it's back to 2.5. And I guess that's just the vacuum sucking the butterfly down and changing the angle of it. There's possibly a bit of wear in the shaft on the throttle bodies. And uh, that's why it does that. Again, it's just how it is. You just set it up, whatever it wants, and uh, go from there. That's all you can do. Just continuing one point about setting the idle mixture. It somewhat depends on how the bike was set up to start with. Uh, traditionally, Ducati used to say set the idle mixture at between four and 6%, uh, except for American market models, which were always sort of, you know, 1% or something. But if you put a tune or an EEPROM into a bike and you set it up this way, you do the TPS properly, you do the idle mixture properly, you're working on the assumption that the person who did the original tuning did the same things. And sometimes it's very obvious that that hasn't been done. You might get a, a tune or an EEPROM that you put in and you set the idle mixture to 5% and the bike runs horribly and you lean it back to you know 2% or 1% and it works a lot better. Or it needs to be you know really rich on the idle mixture to run properly. And that simply means that the person who did the original tuning didn't pay attention to the baseline setup. And that's one of those things that you just deal with sometimes. Most of the Ducati models these days are pretty good. Occasionally you get something that you'll set up and you'll, you'll find it just cruising along at 3000 revs, it's really rich. So you bump the idle trimmer back 10 points and the thing's idling at 1% and not particularly nicely, but it then cruises really nice. So it's a bit adaptable sometimes. And if you can get into the mapping, you could go in, you could then rich in the idle section of the map up. And so when you set the idle mixture, the idle's right, but it's 10 points leaner on the trimmer because you've, you've manipulated the ECU file to give you the result you want. And we used to do that a bit with uh, EEPROM files as well. If we ran a bike, there was a particular EEPROM that we did years ago with Dwayne, where when I fitted the EEPROM to bikes in our workshop, we realized that the idle mixture on the bike we did the mapping on was way off 
And so then we had to mimic the idle trimmer setting that was in the ECU of the bike we did the mapping on. And then we had to um, lean, I think we had to lean the EEPROM fuel file so we got the right idle mixture. <clears throat> it's what you need to do sometimes. But usually, you know, three or four percent will give you what you want. You just need to do it as required, and that's the whole thing. We used to do this on mid 90s motor gutsies, and the assumption that if you did the TPS properly and the idle mixture properly, that it would be right was just completely wrong. The mapping on those things was just so bad that it didn't matter what you did. Generally, if you played with it, you usually made it worse. But these days, things are a lot better than that.